This video is about some light topic. It is about the notebooks that we have seen together last time, and it is about the text part of this notebook. It is something worth investigating and investing a few minutes for you, for your attention and your study, because they are likely to become a very big thing, where they are already big thing in uh, open science, reproducible science, and in general in data science and data analysis. So let me go to the website of the uh, of our course and I click on resources. If I go now on notebooks like I did for the other for the previous video, one of the notebook that I made you available is called Introduction to Markdown. So let me click on Open in Collab. And for this specific example, it's not really uh, important that uh, so you see the first cell uh, that I explained to you in class was involving some sort of trick to allow Julia to be executed on the cloud in this context is not really relevant so I'm actually sticking with Python but it's not really about Python it's not about coding it's more general so what you have in front of you is like a web page but it's a combination you see of figures text with headings, hyperlinks. If I click, say, on this nature uh, link, I get uh, an article. It's about 10 computer codes that transform science. And I get something strange, gray looking, so this must be code. And what is uh, below here is the response, the, the kind of outcome, the result of the execution of this code. And if you actually are curious, well, this is Python for plotting things. And what we plot is some sort of sinusoidal function. And indeed, it's some, some sort of uh, oscillating thing. So code to generate something and the result of this computation, of this code. There are even equations, nicely formatted, nicely written. And once more, uh, bold, headings, um, italics, strike through. You actually see here combination of everything lists unordered ordered and unordered links that we have seen images online classes I know I know and uh, something rendered as code like in uh, uh, if you want to to, to write some uh, something that you don't want it to be rendered as a rich text so this is what is called inline or code blocks and so and so forth so tables is another example, horizontal rulers is another one, and uh, yeah, uh, symbols, equations, etc. So what this notebook, this specific notebook is, is a sort of cheat sheet. So it's a place where you can go back and refer as a sort of help. It's a demonstrator of these uh, uh, notebooks. So Google Collab is an online tool that allows people for free to explore and use these notebooks. These are computational environments. So, and the computational part is because you combine both text, equations, figures, but also code that is executed within the same document. Something that you don't have with Word or with other, uh, uh, other environments to compose uh, documents. And in, in, the, in the field, they are called, they are known as Jupyter notebooks. Actually, somebody is calling Jupyter. It's about who you ask about. And this stands for Julia, Python, and R. They are, th they are names of three computing environment, Python, Julia, and R. They are extremely spread and widely used and adopted in all fields of neuroscience, from cell electrophysiology to cognitive neuroscience. It is an example of literate programming um, which is basically a way to say, here is the code, but this is also the textual description of this code. So if I give it to you, you will not only get the code, but get all that I thought about and the presentation of it and all the explanation that it's there for you. So it's considered to be the forefront for open and reproducible science. And the uh, link that I click, this Nature Paper 2021, named Ju Jupiter as one of these 10 computing projects that transform science. So this notebook is a collection 
like the others that we've seen uh, together. It's a collection of cells. Now these cells, let me actually click here and then say plus code plus text. So the only cells that these documents, with the exception of this one, are all text. So let me actually add the code. So here I added one of these cells and I, of course, write hello world. If I now press like it was for the code cells, shift enter, this is rendered. So the kind of insight and, and, and the uh, editing mode that was available as I was creating or double clicking, which is like this, and I could continue adding stuff after I press shift enter is hidden. So it looks nice and you actually have the full render things. In this particular case, it was nothing special. Let me come here and delete this. So this is an example, and it's the only one, in which you have the code and you can launch the code. And after a while, you actually see the result of this computation here. It's taking a couple of seconds because it was not connected. Let me wait. And finally plots it. I'm tempted to say, hmm, maybe I can change uh, here instead of uh, two. I, what, I, what happens if I put 10, uh, sorry, 20? And you actually see that the plot changed. So this code is really executed, and this is the result, and you have everything on the same document. You can do much powerful things like having equations. So let me click on this. So let's only focus on the text. Not about the Python things. You actually see that uh, the when I edit kind of source, it looks a bit strange. There are some, um, some placeholders like the symbols that are not rendered here. So you see here you have a nice italic variable T. Instead here is described by this dollar sign, which is enclosing the letter T. And the equation, you actually see it's rendered nicely but it requires some convention. So you have to enclose things by the, question, uh, the, the, the dollar sign. And there is this sort of uh, commands in order to make a fraction, for instance. And there are these uh, 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 curly brackets that are apparently doing something. There is also this slash pi, which is rendered as pi. Now, the details are not very strictly important. You can Google how to write equations in Markdown very quickly. But the point is, you, can, you should be aware that this specific notebook is there for you as a reference, and it allows you to combine also equations. But Markdown is the fundamental sort of textual encoding language that is behind it. It allows you to do bold, italic, styles, hyperlinks, etc. in a very concise and simple way. But it's different from Microsoft Word. That is a software that is also called what you see is what you get. It seems initially a nice idea, but I bet that uh, during your master thesis, or maybe you have already experienced during your bachelor, when the project grows very much, that you have a lot of figures, a lot of tables, changing a small spacing or paragraph is basically altering the structure of the entire document and you get crazy. Sometimes the software is crashing. Sometimes you actually lose the work because you didn't save. So it's also, there is a problem because of the file format is not the best. It's actually, you probably know that those Word files can get very big. And it's in general difficult to spot, if I give you two files, what are the differences? Uh, you have to use Word itself to tell what are the changes, the revisions between one version to the next. It doesn't need to be like this and in open and reproducible signs, there are alternatives, and one is marked down. So you can you can write your own thesis and uh, uh, and and papers in Markdown, staying only with a text file, which is very light, very small, and having separate things, separate like I had here, separate places where the image is located. In this case, is an image that is linked. So there is this convention, exclamation mark, square brackets for the alternative text, and then the 
uh, uh, round brackets, the, the normal, the parentheses for the link where the image is located. And this idea is quite interesting and allows you to make, to keep things small, portable, and universal. It is probably 40 or 50 years that text files are around and almost everything is able to read them. I bet that some of the early work that you did maybe on a computer when you were a kid is not compatible because there is not any more a software that is able to load uh, the, the file format. So not only you can do, um, uh, you can do images or equations, you can do bold, you can do italic, you can do hyperlinks, which is similar to the images, but without the exclamation mark. And if you forget about this in the case of specific, this specific environment of Google Collab, you actually have buttons here. So if I want to make notebooks bold, I can click here and you see it puts these conventional uh, two asterisks before, uh, so around uh, the word. If I want to do this italic, I do this, and I invite you to explore this sort of graphical user interface as an aid if you don't remember uh, things. But it's very easy. After 10 minutes, you will actually remember this sort of convention. And it's very easy either to read and to write. So even if I didn't have this rendered nice with a, with a title uh, that, is, uh, that is a little bit larger because it was preceded by a single hash uh, symbol, well, I would actually be still be able to, to look at this text and understand, well, okay, here there must be some emphasis and here there must be, again, bold and, and italic and this is a link. So this document is here for you so that you learn how to basically write in Markdown. You want to have headings? Well, use one, two, three, etc. cetera, um, hash symbols in order to get from the uh, top to the, to the, 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 the most, the highest uh, uh, hierarchy heading to the lowest. You want to have bold, you have these two asterisks that are already set. You want italic, only one. You want strike through, well, you use a double tilde uh, around the word or the sentence that you want to, 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 to strike. And you can have combinations. So you see here, it's bold, italic and bold and, and uh, strike through. If I double click, I will actually see, uh, basically, sorry, basically, uh, I will actually see how it is how it is done. And if I press Shift Enter, the cell is going to be evaluated again and rendered nicely. You can do lists. This list can be ordered. That means one, two, three, or unordered. And it's very very easy. You actually have just uh, to start with. 1.2.3. or asterisk space asterisk space. You actually see on the right how this is rendered. Links. We already very quickly seen that you can do links, and you can include images. Yeah, I know online classes are not uh, are not perfect, and some other times you may want to render like say a quotation uh, without rich text in a sort of what it's called. Uh, code-like uh, fonts. And actually you can do this by enclosing uh, the text with the backticks if it wanted to be this inline or uh, with the three of these backticks. And this you see is rendered uh, with, uh, with this spe special font. This special font is supposed to be used for um, code. When you want to describe the code, you don't want to execute it. And it's so powerful that you can here you can put the name of the programming language that you want to use and automatically you will get what is called syntax highlighting. It's a basically it's a useful thing but just for the eye. It's candy for the eye for uh, so-called uh, 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 highlighting uh, keywords or strings or characters and things like that. So here it's JavaScript you actually see it's a little bit different and uh, etc. Here it's C and you see that in the C language, you would have different keywords that would be highlighted. And finally, tables. Tables are nicely rendered, so you don't have to have a table editor from, uh, from Word. They are actually edited like this, and when they are rendered, they are rendered nicely, uh, like indicated here on the right. 
Finally, if you want to have an horizontal ruler, it's enough that you type three times or four times or whatever uh, minus signs and it will be rendered. And Greek symbols, Greek letters, or symbols in general, can be done with this dollar sign that I mentioned at the beginning with a prepending uh, uh, a backslash. So these alpha is literally uh, uh, rendered or spelled as slash A-L-P-H-A or phi gamma P. Uh, and once more, uh, pi. And once more, you don't know how to do that. Well, you search Google for how to write equations in Markdown or how to write uh, symbols in Markdown. Here is another example, the fraction like it was used before, curly brackets and uh, whatever these expressions are. And here it's with the, uh, again, fractions and here it's with the integral. So this slash int stands for, you see this integral sign. If you have to use them, you learn them pretty quickly. I would only like to you to know that this is possible and therefore you can uh, you can you can google it google it so basically you graduated now in the use of markdown and i would invite you to play by yourself and the idea if you choose to do the assignments is that you are not only changing the code but you are also changing or adding the text and you know how to have it a good looking text